Hey everybody, Suze here from Revelation Quilts. Check out this really awesome, super modern quilt behind me. You will not believe how easy this is to make and I'm gonna show you how it's done right now. Make it with me. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using a layer cake of Kona solids in bright rainbows. So they've got just a ton of great colors here and I am going to be using those. I'm also going to be using some five inch squares in white. I cut these from yardage, but you can, if you have a white charm pack, you can certainly use that. Or if you have a white uh, layer cake, you can use part of those and just cut them into five inch squares. I'm also going to be using some leftover fabric from a, a layer cake that is 10 inches in black. I'm going to be cutting those into two and a half inch strips. So you can also use a jelly roll if you have jelly roll pieces of black, uh, maybe left over from a jelly roll. And so that is all we're going to need. Okay, so we have our layer cake and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut all of our layer cake pieces in half. So you will have all these pieces that are five inches by 10 inches. And I just mixed up my colors here and we are going to take two of those colors and pair them together. So I'm going to, for this first block, I'm going to take this orangey red color and I'm just going to randomly pick a color and I'm going to pair it with this green. Okay. So those are the two I'm going to use. And then you will also need 42 two and a half by 10 inch strips. And I'm just using a leftover layer cake that I have, just some leftover pieces. If I run out of those, I'm going to uh, just either cut some or I'm going to use a jelly roll strip. Either way, it's very versatile. So you will need one strip for each block. And then you will also need some five inch squares of the white. I cut this from yardage, but you will need 42 of these. So that makes, that's exactly what a charm pack is, most charm packs. So you can use a charm pack for your white or whatever fabric you choose. And these are going to be our circles. So in order to make these our circles, we are going to put them on some fusible. And so I'm going to cut some fusible. I'm going to cut a five inch strip of fusible. And I just use, um, I don't even know. I think this is heat and bond extra light. I'm not really sure because I've had it for a long time. And I have a five inch ruler here. So I'm just going to cut a five inch strip of this. And I am going to, I can fuse, I think I can get three squares on this. So let me just cut this. There we go. Put this aside. And you can do all of this all at once if you want, or you can just kind of do it as you go. So we're going to go over the ironing board and we're going to stack some of our charm squares. I think I can get three. Let's see, one. It's all rolled up and not flat. One, two, three. Okay, with a little left over at the bottom. So I'm going to take these over to the iron board and I'm going to fuse these on here. So here we are at the iron board. I actually have a silicone pressing sheet and it's, it's old. I've had it for a really long time. So I am going to place my squares on here. Make sure I don't have any extra threads on there that get stuck between my charm square and my fusible. So I'm just going to press these right. I'm just going to line them up like this. And then I'm going to put this over. Now this has two sides. One is just a paper side and one is kind of a, a rough side. You can feel that it's rough. The rough side is your sticky side and you want that down on your squares. So I'm just gonna put that down right over top of my squares. Just get it under there as best you can. And then I'm just gonna take my iron 
and I'm just gonna press it on there. Not for super long, just long enough so it fuses on there. And because I have this Teflon sheet under here, I'm saving my ironing board. And we're gonna end up tracing a circle on there. Doesn't have to stay on there super long, just long enough so it's sticky. And then when you pick it up, oh, it's hot. Don't burn yourself. And there you go, you are stuck. Now I'm gonna let that cool down and take this back to my cutting board. So I've got my sheet on here. I've got the paper side here and the fabric side is here. And I'm just gonna turn it over so the fabric is facing down at the table. And I'm gonna draw a circle on each of the five inch squares. Now I just have this circle. It's four and a half inches from side to side. And I didn't, this is actually the, the lining of a jar lid that I have, a wide mouth jar lid. But you can use whatever you want for a circle, you can trace around a bowl. As long as it fits within that five inch square, you are good to go. So I'm just gonna take my pencil and I'm just going to trace around that just so I have a circle. Just hold it down and trace around that so I have a circle there and the next one. And one more. Okay, so I've got my three circles on there. Hopefully you can see that. And then I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm going to cut those apart. And I'm gonna cut out each of the circles. And when you cut out the circles, open your scissors nice and wide. And then once you get to your circle, just use real smooth cutting don't cut really, you know, choppy, like the little cuts. Just open your scissors nice and wide and get that smooth cut around that circle. Just cut on the lines. You want it to be as round as you can. Just take your time. This is like Zen stuff. This is where I sit in front of my computer or listen to a video or watch TV. You can cut them, you can do these all at once. I usually do like three or six at a time because I like to give what I do a nice variety. So you'll just cut these out until you have an entire circle that's fused on. There we go, so there's my circle and I'm just gonna cut these out. This is just waste. And I'm going to cut these out and then we'll go to our next step. So I've got my three circles cut out and I'm just going to do three at a time just for the sake of showing you. But I do want to remind you that when you draw your circles, make sure you draw them on the paper side and not the fabric side because you don't want any pencil to show on your fabric side. So the next step, what we're going to do is we are just going to take one of our circles because it's one circle per block. And it's kind of stiff because it's got the paper on the back. We're just going to fold that in half towards the fabric. Fold it so the fabric side is on the inside. So now you've got like a half circle that you folded. It should look like this, just kind of with the, the indentation on the inside. And then you're going to take a ruler and you're just going to butt that ruler up right against that fold. So if you keep pushing, it will just move the circle because the fold catches it. So, and then we're gonna take our rotary cutter and we're just gonna cut that circle right in half. So now we've got two halves of a circle and they're perfectly cut in half because we folded it. It looks awesome, it looks perfect. Now we are going to take our two pieces of our layer cake and we are also going to fold each of these in half this is the fun part. I'm gonna fold those in half. And if you wanna give that seam a little press, you can, or you can finger press it, whichever is more convenient for you. It's nice to have a nice crease here because you will need it for two different reasons. And I will show you those reasons. 
So I've got a nice crease on each one of my strips here. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to take one of these and we are going to take the paper off. It just peels right off. So now you've got the back is kind of shiny. You'll take the shiny side and you'll put it down towards the center like this. And this is a nice thing to do actually at your ironing board because now you can just take your iron and press it on there so it sticks. And you're gonna take your other half circle and you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Just the back should just peel off nice and easy like that. And you're gonna line that up on the next one so the end just kisses that fold that you put in there and then it goes right along the bottom. So this one kisses the fold in the fabric and is lined up at the bottom. Same with this one on the opposite side. So let me press these on there so they're stuck and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so I've got my two white half circles pressed on there. They're not going anywhere. Now at this point, if you want to, you can do a little zigzag stitch and sew those down just right along the edge there, or along the curve, if you want to. I'm not going to. You don't have to sew the bottom down because that is going to get caught in this strip here. So the next step is that we are going to put our strip in the middle and we're gonna sew this to this, fold it over and just sew right down this line. Okay, so I've got my black strip sewn on here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my green strip and I'm going to fold that over there and sew on my green just like that. But before I sew it on, I do wanna show you how to line it up so that you get it just perfect. So you remember these, these, these folds that we put in here when we folded it? So when you flip over your second strip, you can line it up on the edge but you can also line it up so these folds line right up with each other. And so that will help you get it exactly straight and even so that your circles will match up like they're supposed to. So that's a pro tip for you. So I will get that sewn on and then we'll take a look and see what that looks like. So there is your block. The next thing we have to do is we're going to trim it. Now, because we have put this black strip in here, it is now 10 inches by I think 11 or 11 and a half now. So we want to square this back up to 10 inches. So here's how we are going to trim this block. We've got this little two inch strip, black strip now in the middle. So we are going to take our ruler and we are going to measure four inches. We're going to put our, our line right along here and we're going to measure four inches out from the line of that black strip. And we're just going to cut this excess off like so and then turn it over and do the same thing measure four inches from that black line there we go now our strip again measures 10 inches by 10 inches just like it's supposed to so we've got our 10 inch block. It's really cute. It's really pretty. Now I have made half of the blocks like this, one circle on the upper left and one circle on the lower right. I'm doing half of them like this, but I'm also doing half of them like this. So you see the difference. So now I've got, hopefully you can, I can get all that in the camera. So this one starts off with a circle in the upper left down to the lower right. This one starts in the lower left to the upper right. So I'm doing half and half so that when I put them together on my design wall, it's gonna create this really cool overall effect. And I don't know if you can kind of get the idea, but it's gonna end up being very curvy and very cool. And that is really easy to make, so I'm gonna, make all the rest of these blocks. It's going to make a pretty good size quilt. So let's get our, get all these made and get them up on our design board 
and see how they look. Okay, here we go. I've got it up on my design wall and I love it. I think it's amazing. I just love the wavy lines and how it creates that optical illusion of just rolling and I'm calling this marble motion. So I just think it's really cool. I know I mentioned before that I'm not going to sew around my little white circles, but you can certainly zigzag those down if you want. The reason I'm not going to is because I'm gonna take care of that when I do the quilting. I plan on doing some quilting uh, on those circles and so that will, that will stitch them down while I'm quilting it. So uh, instead of just going over it twice, um, I'm just gonna take care of that at that time. So that is my reasoning for doing it that way. The entire quilt measures 66 by 57. That is without borders. If you add borders, um, I'll probably do a black border on this. So if you add borders, you will be able to extend the size of that, but it's really fun and it's really easy. And there was really only two seams per block and just sewing each that black strip on. And so it was so easy and so fast and I'm super happy with it. It's just a really modern quilt and I don't get to do those very often. So I thought it was really fun to do and it looks just as good vertical as it does horizontal. So I'm still trying to decide which way I want to make it go in my house. So I love it. So thanks so much. Uh, for watching this. It's been super fun to make. It actually went really fast. I couldn't believe how fast it went. And so I encourage you to give this a try. Even if you've never tried applique before, I encourage you to give this a try because it was really easy and it did go very fast. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. I welcome any subscribers. And if you really want to get involved, please join as a member of my channel. There's a video that expresses all the benefits of the different levels of membership. So thanks again for watching. This is Suze from Revelation Quilts signing out.